And tell us about the parts of it. It's, it's basically a mechanical violin. Equivalent, it right? is, and in fact, in French, they call it vielle à coups, a violin with a wheel. <laughs> so that's exactly what it is. It has strings, so it is a chordophone. This particular one has three strings. There is a wooden disc which spins and rubs against those three strings as I turn the crank, and I use violin rosin or cello rosin on that disc, just as you would with the bow of a violin. Without the rosin, you don't get a nice even vibration of the strings. You'll notice perhaps also that there's cotton wrapped around here. That's to protect the string so that it doesn't wear out. So these these two strings I have had on this hurdy-gurdy since it was born. Last weekend when I was playing around with the tuning for the first time I broke the other string. So it's had a very good <laughs> life. This is actually the extra string that was wrapped around. I was, it broke up here. I was able to pull it down and use the same string, just shortening it. So it has, it has the vibrating wheel, which is, functions like the bow of a violin. Underneath the lid, we have what is essentially the fingerboard of a violin, but instead of my fingers stopping the string, there are wooden tangents. So when you push the tangent, it shortens the string. So now the string is only vibrating from here to here. If I release it, gravity pulls it back. There are no springs. It is a strictly mechanical instrument. So now the whole length of the string is vibrating. This one is tuned so that we've got a chromatic scale. Other nationalities have slightly different arrangements with different tunings. The oldest hurdy-gurdies, which were called organistrums, were really monstrous devices. They were six to eight feet long. They required one person to sit at the end and turn the crank, and the other person, sitting about two feet away, used their hands to manipulate the wooden tangents, which were about this wide and about that long. So maybe uh, place a little bit. First, let's hear just the melody string by itself. Just the melody string. Okay. instrument is you can hear the wooden tangents moving in and out so you get not just the melody but and then with the drone if we add there are two drone strings that are tuned an octave apart so if we add the higher sound a bit like a bagpipe is the presence of that fixed pitch, the drone. Adding the second. So it's a rather noisy instrument. It was intended to be used outdoors. So they wanted something that was loud enough to be heard outside when you don't have the acoustics of a building surrounding you. So one last thing, show us the, uh, the shen, or the dog, or the trumpet, as it's called. Which, on the Hungarian hurdy-gurdy, is nothing more than a removable wooden stick. And you can place this in, so there are multiple adjustments. By sliding it this direction, you're turning it on, putting it here, prevents it from vibrating and it's turned off. So when we move it here into the on position, as this string vibrates now, it will make this piece of wood vibrate. And you can immediately hear that buzz. That's the sound of this piece vibrating and rubbing against the, the surface of the hood. So that's in its loudest position.
manipulate the rhythm which they create by snapping their wrist as they play it, and they can get rather complex counter rhythms, but it requires real dedication and hours of practice. <laughs> well, thank you for this uh, quick tour. We look forward to hearing you play it uh, in the new piece with Bucks County Choral Society, contrasting with the brass instruments representing royalty and the folk instrument representing the people, as well for the poor as the pair. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.